All right, folks. Um, today I have a chance to uh, test this uh, trace pure sine wave inverter, <coughs> and um, I uh, thought I would do a short review and overview of the uh, of this inverter. And um, this particular one is uh, the model number is uh, SW. 4048 okay so let's see SW 4048 uh, the f number 40 means uh, the watt so 40 uh, short for 4000 watt 48 is the voltage so it's a 48 volt DC input uh, from the battery bank 48 volt and 4000 watt and it will put out 120 volt AC and here is the connection um, let me show it this way it's got um, it's got AC hot in, okay. AC hot in from a generator, and neutral in from the generator, and it's got a uh, neutral in number two. So actually, on the top, it's got AC hot in from your this one here is AC hot in from your house okay on the bottom here is AC hot in from a generator so it can take input AC input from both a generator and from a uh, power grid okay and in the bottom here it's got um, AC out and neutral out so these two here are the output the AC output okay and the input the DC input is on the other side this is the DC input uh, 48 volt positive here negative here and um, this inverter is um, Let's see how it was built in 2001. Okay. First quarter of 2001. And now it's 2015. So it's 14 years old. And it still works as a job. Um, to me, I have, I have used uh, quite a lot of inverters and um, to me this in this kind of inverter is the best on the market for you know for individual use even commercial uh, use uh, this is still uh, very good provided that it provides uh, you know enough power this one is 4000 watts for your house and um, it's been a long, it's, it's built a long time ago, but uh, it is, I think it is the best. Um, I prefer it better than the newer Outback uh, inverter or the Sunny Boy uh, inverter. Uh, the newer ones got very complicated um, computer controlled electronics, and the electronics are very crazy this one this one doesn't have a lot of computer control all it's got is just a panel here and you know you just uh, just give it simple program and it do exactly what you want it to do when to uh, charge the battery and when to uh, shut, uh, shut it down and, and all that um, 
and when to use the generator and when to uh, put back the power to the grid because um, when you hook up to your battery um, most people will have a solar array to charge the battery system and when the battery is full this inverter is capable of putting the power back to the grid because it's got an AC hot input this top two I mean stop input here is the AC hot input from your house so it can take the power in to charge the battery if your battery is full and it can uh, put the power back to the grid I mean I said it wrong it can charge the battery let me say again it can charge the battery when the battery is low okay so it it used power AC power from the grid and convert it to DC to charge the battery or when the battery is full um, say you have a solar array to charge the, the, the batteries and when the battery is full it is capable of putting power back to the grid uh, via this input here so it it converts the power from solar to the battery and then goes go uh, it convert it it convert that to AC and then that goes back to the grid and turn the meter backward and uh, it is a very neat inverter. It's built like it builds like for military, you know, um, use, and it's very, very durable. And it gives up pure sine wave. Um, and it's uh, before when it first made it was first made by Trace Engineering. And then it was bought by Zantrax. And then um, later on, it um, Zantrax was acquired by Snyder Electric. But anyway, um, it is a very good inverter. Uh, next, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook it up to a uh, to a 48 volt battery system. And I'm gonna test it out. Okay, stay tuned. I'm about to hook it up uh, to the um, inverter, and um, in order to uh, use this, you need a line for the AC. So this is the AC line output, output, and for the DC, I'm just gonna use a uh, jumper cable to uh, to hook it up to a 48 volt battery system all right let's get ready right now I'm ready to connect the DC part this is the most scary part of the operating of the operation um, because uh, when you first hook it up to the DC the capacitor um, is at rest it's not charged so when you uh, hook it up, you need a, um, a switch, a DC disconnect to turn it on. And I do not have a DC disconnect, so uh, I'm just going to show you what it looks like when you hook it up without a disconnect. And it's going to spark like fireworks. I have a 48, I mean I have a 24 volt. Uh, version of this inverter and it still produce a lot of spark and um, I tried it with a 48 volt a few times before every time has a spark some are larger than the other it depends on how charged the capacitor is and uh, I think it's gonna be no exception this time so I got everything ready 
and uh, good to go. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm ready yet, but uh, somebody's got to do it, right? Here I come. Alright, ready or not, here I come. Hold on. It's gonna be like a bomb. I hope not. Oh, it doesn't explode on me. Let me wear eye, prote eye protection. You never know. Hmm. No spark, which is good. Which is good. I mean, that means the inverter. I mean the uh, the capacitor uh, is charged enough uh, not to cause a spark. But anyway, um, I have it ready to test. And on the other end, on the other end, I have the AC line ready. Um, let's see if this works. I'm ready to turn it on and let's see what happens. Okay. Okay. So when you first turn it on, when you press the button, it will turn on and it will search for load. If there's no load, you see the humming. You see, I mean, you you hear the humming sound like, mm, and then it search for load. And then if there's no load. On the system, it will automatically shut down because it wants to consume, uh, to conserve power. Uh, that way, you don't use. It doesn't use power when it's not necessary. Now, if you p want to permanently turn it on, you press that button once again. So you have to basically press that button twice. Okay. So right now, it's blinking. It's like inverting. This yellow light here is blinking. I assume you see that on camera, but show me that. See that? Yellow light is blinking, and uh, it says inverting. It's blinking, so it's on standby. Okay. Now, you press that again, it will turn on. And we will convert DC to AC. You hear the humming noise? Now it's on. Okay, now I'm gonna test to see if I have anything out on the AC. Okay, so let's put it over here. I've got 122 volt. So 122.2. So that's good. Okay. Now let's try some power tool. Let's see if it works. Right. Not here. Angle grinder. Angle grinder hooked directly to the to the wire from the AC output. 
Oh. Let's show you. Look directly right here. Okay. Very good, it's uh, working. I'm happy. And the inverter um, has no problem. This this angle grinder is about, let me see how many amp it is. Uh, five and a half amp. Is it? Five and a half amp at two hundred and twenty volt. That's about six to seven hundred. Six to seven hundred watts, and it doesn't. It doesn't have any problem at all. Uh, powering six seven hundred watts. Mind you, this is a four thousand watt inverter, and it can. I believe it can do a search power search uh, power twice as that so at say when you first turn on something it will search uh, it will has a uh, will have a power search say uh, 1000 watt refrigerator when you first turn it on it will give a power search about 2000 watts or so and this inverter has a search capacity I believe 8,000 watts um, but it can burn continuously 4,000 watts easily alright uh, my job is done here and uh, this is just a short overview and review of the uh, trace SW4048 pure sine wave uh, 4000 watts inverter and uh, yes uh, that's all I have and thank you for watching and uh, if you like the video uh, I would appreciate if you uh, just uh, give some thumbs up and uh, subscribe again uh, thank you for watching and see you uh, the next video